Hello everyone and welcome to Building Web Applications. My name is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com. Today, we're going to be talking about the Visual Studio Code Editor, or VS Code for short. We're going to see how to install Visual Studio Code and just kind of explore a little bit of some of the functionality and options. Now up to this point, we've been working with the text inside of Notepad, and it's been pretty bland and plain. The text is just black on a white background. We don't have any sort of special colors or anything to help us out with indentation or the look or flow of the document. It's kind of hard to work with, and we, we have to type everything out exactly as we're supposed to. And typically that would be fine, but when you're doing development, you want to be more productive. You want to be able to build things faster. And that's where a text editor like Visual Studio Code can really help out. So here we can see the same text inside of the text editor, and we get some nice things like syntax highlighting and IntelliSense, automatic code completion. And then we also have support for multiple languages. There's lots of extensions that can add to the capabilities of Visual Studio Code. And it's even cross-platform. So you can run VS Code on Windows, on Linux, or even on a Mac. So let's just hop in and see where we can download Visual Studio Code and then install it and take a look at a couple of the different things that we find inside of Visual Studio Code. I've created a new virtual machine on my computer and I've installed Windows 10 on it. So we have a clean installation of Windows 10. There's nothing installed in here that might interfere with what we're doing. Now I'm gonna go up to Microsoft Edge and double click to open it up. And of course, we're gonna get the default pages that wanna open up. Let's just go ahead and just kind of close this down. I don't really need to know more about Microsoft Edge, that's fine. And the page that we wanna to go to is code.visualstudio.com. Now from here, we're gonna see that we have the option of clicking on this big green button here that says download for Windows. Now, if you're using a Linux or a Mac operating system, this is gonna specify the operating system that you're on. So it might say download for OS X or it might say download for Linux. And you're just gonna click on this link and it's gonna go ahead and automatically download the file for you. We wanna go ahead and save this. You could click on run if you want to, but I, t I typically go ahead and save the file first to my downloads folder, just in case something happens wrong the first time I try to run it. So now that the installation file has completed downloading, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the run button here. And this is going to go ahead and execute the installation package. Just go ahead and follow the instructions through the wizard. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the defaults that come along with it, such as this location for the installation path. And this is going to be where um, my start menu folder is located. That's fine. Now, at this point, uh, I could leave the defaults in, in place, but I am going to go ahead and select everything. I'm going to say I want the desktop icon, open with code actions, and register code as an editor for all supported file types. Uh, by default, just the add to path is selected, and that's perfectly acceptable to just have that selected, but I like all these extra little features too, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select all of that. And then click on Next and Install. Okay, now that we're done installing it, it's asking us if we want to go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish and say, that yes, I do want to go ahead and launch it. And while that's opening up, I'm going to close my Edge browser. You can see there's the nice icon there. And here we go. So Visual Studio Code is going to open up and I'm not going to have any files currently selected to edit, right? Because we don't have any files currently on this system. And it looks like it is opening up another uh, Microsoft Edge page just to try to say, hey, congratulations for getting Visual Studio Code. Here's how to get started. Again, I don't need that. And I'm going to expand this out so it takes up the whole screen. We could improve the Visual Studio Code by allowing Microsoft to collect usage data. Uh, I don't really particularly like that, but okay. And then I'm going to close the welcome screen here. And what I'd like to do is get started with a new index.html file. So I'm just going to go ahead and build that here on my uh, desktop. I'm going to right click here and say that I want a new. And I'm just going to basically make a new text file like I did before. Okay, so I'm going to call it index.html. And unfortunately, this is still going to have the .txt extension because by default, Windows doesn't show the extensions. So even though I put index.html, it also has a .txt at the end that's hidden. 
and I could go into the folder settings and change that. But I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to say File, Open File, and I'm going to select from my desktop, there is my index.html, and it's actually a TXT file. So I'll go ahead and click Open, and there we see now it says index.html.txt. So if I go and click on this button, this is the Explorer button. And this is where we can see all of the files that are currently open in our editors. And we can also open up a folder that is containing any files that we want to edit. I'm going to go ahead and click on the open folder. And I'm going to select on my desktop and select that folder. So I'm just going to look at all the files that are on my desktop. And it's going to reload Visual Studio Code. That's fine. But now we can see Visual Studio Code link, Microsoft Edge.link, index.html.txt, and desktop any. Of course, this index.html.txt is the one I want to actually edit. And before I get started, I want to rename it so that I get rid of the .txt. So I'm going to rename. And I just did that by right-clicking on the file, and that gave me the menu options. And now I can change it to index.html. Now, one of the first features that I wanted to show you about Visual Studio Code is how we now have this new icon next to my index.html file indicating that this is an HTML document. And that's very helpful. Visual Studio Code can kind of show with an icon what kind of file it is. So this is an HTML, and it knows that based upon the extension, even though I don't have anything written in here. Let's go ahead and uh, add our index.html code that we wrote before. So it starts off as a doc type, right? Now, as soon as I started doing the open angle bracket, exclamation point, DO, you'll notice that I got this pop-up here that says D-O-C-T-Y-P-E. This is what we call autocomplete or IntelliSense, okay? So I've got IntelliSense is the actual pop-up here that gives us the different kinds of options. The automatic code completion is if I were to right now with the doc type selected as the first primary option here, if I was to press the tab key, it automatically completes the code for me. And that is really, really handy. I don't have to type out the whole thing. I can just start off by typing out the first few characters. So open angle bracket, exclamation. And notice that how, let me just backtrack here for just a second. When I did the open angle bracket, notice that we have a lot of different options. This basically gives me all of the different tags that are possible inside of HTML. How cool is that? That's IntelliSense, okay? So now I'm gonna complete this by doing exclamation point, and that kind of tells, oh, well, there was only one option there with an exclamation point, so we have doc type. So really, all I would need to do is the open angle bracket, exclamation point, hit tab, and boom, there we go. There's my doc type. All right, that's great. Let's take a look at what happens when we try to add the HTML tag. So once again, we get the IntelliSense H, T, oh, look at that, there's our one. I can go ahead and hit tab, and it completed it for me. Now, I need to add the close angle bracket for this HTML tag, and oh, what's that? More auto-completion. Look at that, it went ahead and added my closing tag for my HTML element. Isn't that cool? So it automatically knew that, hey, if you got an open, uh, an open tag for an element, you need to have a closing tag. All right, let's create some space here. So I'm just gonna move this down a few lines and let's continue on. So the next thing I need then is going to be my head, right? So I'll do head, all right? And oh, look at that, more auto-completion. And then inside of the head, we're gonna have a title. Oh, wow, okay. And then there's the auto-completion. Now I could just put inside of the title my first web page. Cool. And then we know that after head, we wanna do body right, like that. And one other thing that you might notice here is see how the cursor has moved to a tabbed position. Notice that once I did the body, here, let me backtrack a little bit here. So I'm gonna do body once again, but I want you to watch the cursor very carefully as I do this. So I'm gonna do body, and then I'm gonna hit tab, and that'll complete body, that's fine. But then when I do the close angle bracket, and then hit enter, we have this automatic indentation that's assumed, and it did it up here for head and title as well. It just automatically did the indenting for us. 
which is really, really cool. And then inside of the body, we're gonna have a paragraph. All right, there's our closing tag. And then I'm gonna do a strong tag. And inside of the strong is gonna be a strong content. Oops, typo there. Strong content goes here. Fantastic. And then we're gonna have a span below the paragraph. So we'll do span. And this is gonna say span content goes here. And you can see how easy Visual Studio Code makes us to build a document with the proper indentation to make it readable. And also, look at this. We've got different colors, right? We've got a dark blue. We've got a lighter blue here indicating the doc type is HTML. We've got an HTML tag here that's dark blue. So all of our tags, are, are the names of these tags are dark blue. And then the actual content that goes inside of these is white. So that's kind of nice because now we can actually see the this is what we call uh, syntax highlighting. All the tags have a special color to help us identify that these are tags. And then the white text is what's actually going to uh, be the content inside of those tags. So we've got IntelliSense, we've got automatic code completion, we've got syntax highlighting, that's all fantastic. So let me just save this for now. And let's say that I wanted to open this document up in my default browser. Well, I could of course go here to my desktop and I could double click on it and open it. That's one way of doing it and it's not too difficult. But as I was mentioning before, there's lots of extensions for Visual Studio Code. And you can get to those extensions by clicking on this icon right here called the extensions button. So I'm gonna click on that and now we get a search. And up here you can do a search for all sorts of different extensions. Uh, and you'll see like there is a lot of them in here, right? I can scroll through, there's apparently 11,017 of them that are popular, just the popular ones. So there's a lot of things in here that we can go through and uh, it looks like it's having a little goofiness on the visual there, but there's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna search for HTML. Oops, let me type in HTML properly. And now we can see HTML code snippets, HTML CSS support, HTML boilerplate, all sorts of good stuff. But here's one here, HTML preview. Okay, I'm gonna click on this and I can see the stars on it are not really very good. It's only two and a half stars. I could certainly try it, but eh, that many people is saying it's not that good. Hmm, that's probably not the one I want, but oh, what's this one? Open HTML in default browser. That one has four and a half stars and has just about as many downloads. If I wanna install this, all I have to do is click on the install, the little green button there, and I could have clicked on the one down here, and that will go ahead and install it. Great, so it's installed. Now I can go back to my index.html. If I right click in here, I'm not gonna see any sort of options just yet. Oh, I'm sorry, if I right click on here, I am gonna see the option, there it is, open in default browser. Sometimes for one of these, you have to do a restart of Visual Studio Code, but it looks like it went ahead and added it. So open in default browser, I can click on that and it's gonna just automatically open up this document in whichever editor I wanna pick. So I'm gonna say, always use this app, and, oh, this app to open HTML, that's fine and it'll remember that from here on out, but there is my content. So if I close this, right click on my HTML document, open in default browser, boom, there we go. It opens up in my default browser. So there's a lot of this extendability with Visual Studio Code where you can find extensions for just about anything. There's all sorts of different languages that are supported here, including the C Sharp language. So if I wanted to get C Sharp from for Microsoft Visual Studio Code, I could click on install and get it. There's also language support for Java. So if I wanted Maven for Java or language support for Java uh, and debugger for Java, test runner for Java, all that stuff is in there as well. If you're more of a PHP developer, let's see what we have for that. Well, it looks like PHP IntelliSense. We have PHP debugging, extension pack. So we've got all sorts of languages covered here, including even some lower level languages like C and C++. So if you really wanted that, you could do that as well. And that one's actually provided by Microsoft. So there's lots of great extensions for just about every language you could be working with in Visual Studio Code. It's a very good editor. There's lots of other editors out there as well, like Eclipse, 
uh, or Atom. But really, I think Visual Studio Code has become the the primary one that most people have started to use because it's just very extendable, it's very easy to use, and it's pretty quick. Special thanks to these members who really helped the channel grow. I really appreciate your help and support. Thank you. Yeah.